About three or four months ago, I did a video on how anyone can retire in the Philippines and live on just $1,000 a month. I've had a lot of viewers asking me lately if it's still possible to retire and live in the Philippines on this amount. And the answer is yes, you still can, but it's getting harder and harder to live on this small amount of money each month. The cost of living in Manila and all over the Philippines has certainly gone up. Prices are increasing on just about everything, and many expats are struggling to make ends meet. Filipinos are finding it harder to make ends meet as well. I met an Australian expat in Manila the other day, and he brings in about $1,500 a month with his retirement, and he's seriously thinking about going back home and working part-time. He has a Filipino girlfriend he's been living with for about five years now, and they're planning to get married. After they do get married, he's going to apply for a spousal visa so he can bring her back with him to Australia. He has plans to get a job there, so between his retirement and both of their incomes, they'll be able to improve their quality of life. He said that they just can't make it on $1,500 a month in Manila anymore or anywhere else in the Philippines. If you're planning on moving to the Philippines, don't let this discourage you. Everyone's different. And if you're disciplined, you can easily live here on $1,500 a month. And later in this video, I'll discuss how you can meet a very sweet and loving Filipino lady if you take your time and don't jump into a relationship with the first Filipino girl you meet. In the Philippines, just like in the USA or any country in Europe, there's lots of women who want to meet a good man who will love them and treat him with respect. Despite all the stories we hear online, not all women in the Philippines are scammers. I just recently moved, but I've been living in Quezon City for about 10 months now. I bring in a decent amount of money each month and I can live in the Philippines quite comfortably. However, when I first moved here, I wanted to see for myself if it was actually possible for foreigners to live in the Philippines on a thousand bucks a month. I watched many videos before I moved to this country of people claiming you could survive here on that amount, but I was really skeptical. So I decided to live like a loco and be very frugal with my money. I found a really cozy studio apartment in Quezon City for just $200 a month. It was actually quite clean and it had everything that I needed. It even had aircon, but I decided to live like a local and not use it so I could keep my monthly electric bill as low as possible. My first bill came in just slightly above $50 a month, and then my second uh, electric bill, it was like about $48, so it came down a bit. There were nights when I was really tempted to turn on the aircon so I could sleep more comfortably, but I forced myself not to turn it on, and I actually got used to sleeping without it. My water bill was averaging about $10 a month, and my internet was running about $40 monthly. A couple of things I'm still struggling to get used to is the unreliable internet and the electricity going off from time to time. I bought an inexpensive motorbike, but I don't ride it more than once or twice a week. I usually walk where I need to go because all my shopping's done locally, but I do like to get out once or twice a month and go for nice rides and explore. I spend about $50 a month on gas. Basic things like toothpaste, soaps, and other personal essentials were running me about $15 a month, but prices have gone up on these things as well. I think I'm currently spending about 20 bucks a month now. So all in all, I was spending about $565 a month on everything, and I still had money left over from my $1,000 budget each month to go out and have some fun. I met a sweet Filipina girl who was super nice to me. She would do all the grocery shopping with all the local street vendors, and she'd pick out some really good fresh fruit and vegetables and some decent meat as well. She would come over and cook dinner for me almost every night, and then we'd spend quiet time together at my studio apartment in the evenings during the week. Sometimes she'd go home, and sometimes she'd spend the night. We'd go out on the weekends and have a good time visiting lots of interesting places, and we'd also find some nice and expensive restaurants that had some really good food. So I was living for the first six months on just $1,000 a month. This included being in a relationship with a really sweet Filipino girlfriend. We recently agreed to dial back our relationship because I was feeling a little overwhelmed by how fast she wanted to move ahead in our relationship. She was frequently bringing up her desire to get married someday, but I'm just not ready for this right now. She really is a good woman and maybe I'm crazy to throw away a chance to be with such a beautiful Filipino girl but I feel that we really need to slow things down and be friends and see where it all goes. I don't doubt her feelings for me because she's never asked me for money and she thinks I'm just barely getting by with the money I bring in each month. We still see each other about once or twice a week now and we also talk a lot on the phone. 
If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd like to take a moment to ask you guys to do me a big favor by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel for our future videos. Hitting the like button helps our videos rank better, and I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us. And guys, if you're in a relationship with a lady from the Philippines, we'd really like to hear from you in the comments section. Since my last video, I've decided that after proving to myself that I could live on $1,000 a month in the Philippines, and also support a Filipina girlfriend at the same time, it's time to improve my living conditions. I originally was thinking about moving south to Cebu, but I found a really nice one-bedroom apartment in Makati for $400 a month, and it's really big coming in at about 800 square feet. I'm also using aircon at night now, and I use it occasionally during the day. Right now I'm spending about $2,000 a month in Makati, but if I really wanted to dial down my lifestyle a bit, I could live on about $1,500 a month. The cost of apartments in the Philippines can be very reasonable if you take your time and look around for good deals. I'd like to explore and eventually move south to Cebu or check out Dumaguete City, but for now, I'm going to spend my time exploring Metro Manila and other places. Even though it's not very far away, I still haven't been to Angeles City yet. I've seen all the videos with all the beautiful women walking down Fields Avenue and all the bar grills hanging out on the street. I think it'd be an interesting experience to check it out there and see what it's like in real life. Now as far as meeting a good, decent Filipino woman for a serious relationship, it's very possible for you to meet a good woman who will actually love you and want to take care of you. Filipino women do take very good care of their men if they feel loved and respected, so you've got to be willing to open up your heart and let your feelings be known to the woman that you want to have a relationship with. If you're the type of guy who has a hard time expressing his feelings, you're going to have a hard time meeting a Filipino woman who's going to fall in love with you or any other woman in the world for that fact. Women need to feel loved and if you don't make them feel loved, your relationship's not going to be a very good one. If you're planning on moving to the Philippines, it's very tempting to meet women online so you can have an instant girlfriend when you get here, but it's really hard to know if the woman you're investing your time with online is going to have a good heart. It's so easy to fall in love with a woman who's telling you all the sweet things you want to hear. The scammers are common online, and they're quite skilled in the art of making men fall in love with them. I'm not saying that all online dating is full of scammers, but your odds of meeting and falling in love with a decent Filipino woman will improve considerably if you relocate to the Philippines first, then you can go on a search for a nice lady. There are so many single Filipino women everywhere. If you go to any busy street or any busy part of the city, you'll see tons of ladies walking around either alone or with their friends. It's so easy to strike up a conversation with them too, because they find foreigners to be quite interesting, and they like to ask a lot of questions as well. Even a nerdy guy can feel a little bit like a rock star when it comes to chatting with women. If you see women working on the street as street vendors, you can sit back and watch them to see how they act with other people when they're doing their business. If they have good personalities and seem to be kind to the people they talk with, and they smile a lot, then they may be very likely to have good hearts and be decent women. You can learn so much about a woman's personality if you just sit back and observe how they interact with people without them knowing about it. I became acquainted with a man who lives in Pasig City who met his Filipino wife by doing this. He would make the rounds each day and he'd visit all the local ladies who were street vendors. He would buy things from them daily, and then after a while, they'd get to know him, and he'd get to know them as well. He started a relationship with a lady who worked at a fruit stand. He said that after seeing her daily, he could sense that she was a good woman. She was about five years younger than him, and she didn't have any children. He asked her out, then they began dating, and then they both fell in love with each other. They've been married for about three years now and he collects his social security and she still works at the fruit stand to bring in extra money each month. He said that he's never been happier in his life and that she's truly a soulmate. Meeting women who are not actively online looking for relationships with foreign men is really the best way to go. If you just take your time and don't jump into a relationship with the first lady you meet, you'll certainly increase your odds of meeting a decent woman. Always look for red flags that scammers use like asking for money for various things such as helping out the family, uh, money for medicine or medical expenses, money for their education or their past due rent or their bills. If they approach you with things like this very early on in your relationship, you should consider moving on and meeting another lady. 
If you have the opportunity, it's best to date several ladies at the same time so you can compare each one of them to see who you feel more comfortable with. This way you can weed out the women who seem to genuinely like you for who you are as a person and they're not just hanging around with you for their financial gain. Also, never tell a lady how much money you have. It's best to give them the impression that you're just barely scraping by each month. If they still show you love and affection even though they think you might be on the poor side, then you most likely have met a good woman who's only interested in you and not in your money. And guys, if you're in a relationship with a lady from the Philippines, we'd really like to hear from you in the comments section. Well, that about wraps it up for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would support us by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for watching today, and I want to wish each and every one of you guys out there the best of luck in your search for a sweet Filipino lady. Thank <laughs> you.